Hello, this is tutorial number 8 for Simple Traffic System version 1.0.7. In this video, we'll learn how we can configure a new AI traffic car model and set up new AI traffic car prefabs. We're going to start where we left off in tutorial 1, which is basically we just have an AI traffic controller in the scene, an AI traffic waypoint route in the scene with a few waypoints on it, and we have a single car set to spawn. So we have the AI traffic car random spawning. We're going to be using the complete vehicle pack from SICS games. As an example, this is a good pack because the emission map is included for the cars and the cars also have a texture atlas. So if you're building a large vehicle simulation, this is a very good asset for that because it's highly optimized. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll find the traffic car prefab that we want to customize, which is the one that we're using, AI Traffic Car Random. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. That way we don't break our original prefab if anything goes wrong. Next we can open this prefab and we'll take a look at all of the components that it has. So this traffic prefab comes with an AI traffic car random material attached. We don't need that. We want the car to have the material that it comes with. So I'm just going to remove that. Uh, the other script that it has is a minimum and maximum speed. So you could customize that. It also has a mesh render on the root. So the reason the mesh render is on the root is so that there's one fewer game object that's a child of the root. The more transforms that you have as children means the more processing power Unity is going to need to update them. So whenever possible, if you have objects that are child objects of your cars, if they're not necessary, just don't have them there. So we can, let, let's just actually just go ahead and jump in at this point. So um, I will select a car prefab from this kit. I think I'll just use the simple hatchback car. I'll choose the red one. So I'll drag it and drop it in as a child object. Let's go ahead and focus on it. So we can do this one of two ways. We can remove the mesh render component from the root object, or we can replace the mesh filter and the material on the root object and not use this object. And that's the route that I'm going to do. I'm just going to replace the meshes on the wheels and replace the mesh on the root. So let me control Z and undo some of those changes, get my mesh back. And let me lower this. For some reason, there's a bug with Unity. This has been here forever that if that window is up and you select your prefab, you can't move it at all. So if that happens to you, just go back to your model and lower the viewport window and then go back to your prefab. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to replace the mesh that's being referenced and the material that's being referenced. So to do that, I will select the new prefab model and I'll ping the new mesh and I'll replace that on my root and I will ping the new material and I'll replace that as well. And now we can see if I disable this new car that my my root prefab looks the way that it should, which is great. I just need to move those wheels into position. So to do that, I will do the same thing. I actually want to keep this body kit though. So that's something that is not part of the car. So I'll right click on this prefab and I'll select unpack prefab completely. Now I could take the body kit object and move that to be a child of my car. Next, I will just 
ping the material on the wheels and ping the mesh on the wheels and make sure they're all in here and they are. So let me go ahead and disable this old car and I'll select the front right wheel, assign the new mesh, do the same thing with the left, do the same thing with the back right and the back left. And then I'll shift select and I'll adjust the size of the materials. This car only uses one material for the wheel. Now we just need to copy the transforms of the new wheel position so we can get them in place. So I'll find the front right, copy that from the model and paste it. Front left from the model copy and paste to the prefab. Rear left. And rear right. Okay, so now all of the wheels are in place. And if I Take a look at the colliders really quick. Those are not yet in place. So to push those into place, all we have to do is select the AI traffic car. And because we just replaced the meshes, we don't need to update any of the references here. We can just press this align wheel colliders button and that will move the wheel colliders into position for the most part. You just kind of want to take a quick glance at it and make sure they're okay. From here we can adjust the size a little bit if we need to. I'm actually just going to leave them exactly how they are. I think that they're good. So at this point we have our wheels set up, we have our new car meshes set up. This car is actually ready to use. Let's actually just test it and see what it looks like. Oh, we need to assign it to our waypoint route. So let us go and assign our new random car, which is not really a random car anymore. It's more of a custom car. And we can see that it drives to the end. The wheels are working. The only thing we need to do is get that brake light set up. So to do that, let's rename this car to custom one. Then I'll open it back up. And to get the brake lights working with emission, because this car has an emission map, which is very important for this process, you can change the shader to standard to adjust this a little bit. And what we want to do is we want to set the emission color. Change it to red. Now look, when we toggle on and off our emission, the brake lights come on and off. And if you're using the post-processing stack, you're going to get bloom with this. So you can control the value of the bloom through the intensity here or through your post-processing value. So now that we have the standard shader assigned and our emission map is set up, the car should break when it comes to the traffic light. Actually, the traffic light is not active. It's going to come to the end of the route and there's no other connections, so it's just going to stop driving. There we go. We see the brake light working. And if we want to add another type of light. So let's say we don't want to use the emission or we can't use the emission because we don't have an emission map. There's a new script that's been added. It's called brake light. So if we open this car prefab back up and we add the brake light script to it, we can then go and add a couple point lights to our car. 
So I'll add a point light right here. And I'll adjust the range a little bit, change the color to red. And lighting has been disabled, so we're not seeing a preview. Let's turn that on. And now we can see that we're we're actually getting some intensity from this. So let's move it into a decent place. And I'll, I'll adjust these values a little bit. The lighting condition in this scene is not the best, so I'm not sure how this is going to come out actually. So I have two brake lights and let me increase the range a little bit more. Now I will just add those brake lights into this brake light script and I'll exit out of it. I'll press play. Let's go ahead and pause it so we can take a look at the car. So we'll notice that the brake lights are not on right now. That script is controlling the component. So as the car gets closer, it's going to eventually brake. And we could see that our brake lights turned on and our emission turned on. So if for some reason you didn't have emission, this is a good option. Now the reason only one brake light turned on, this is likely to do with a project setting. So I'll go to edit project settings and over here I will select quality and there's a value called pixel light count. By increasing this, this is the number of lights that you can have active in your scene. So if I change this from, I guess by zero, it still lets you do that one. If I change it to one, it doesn't change. But if I change it to two, then both of those lights work. So at this point, all we need to do is adjust the intensity of the light to, to be a little bit better. And we could adjust the position of them. So you could iterate with your prefab a little bit. But that's how you set up a new AI traffic car and how you could get brake lights working with emission and with actual point lights.